The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 75, NASDAQ up 16, S&P's up 5.5, gold up a buck and a half, trading 14.65 an ounce. Silver flat, $17.05 an ounce. Light sweet crude off 21 cents, $58.37 a barrel. Notes and bonds. You get the 10 year down two, the 30 year off one, and King Dollar. King Dollar up 118 ticks, trading 98.111. Euro is at 110. Yen is at 108.68. And the pound is at 128 to 1 US dollar. Tom O'Brien, what's going on? Good Friday morning. How it's, we doing? It's a TGIF. There's no doubt That's about right. it, folks. Coming into Thanksgiving, gotta love it. It's a it's a risk-free Friday, as one of our tigers would say in the in the den. I love a, that saying. Totally. Every Friday is a risk-free Friday in the market, folks. Unless if you're a Tesla owner and you you hope that the windows don't break on the demo, and they do. Is that something else or what? So let's <laughs> is take. It not? Uh, I know. We'll this, get into if it. You, man, but. If you haven't seen the story, folks, this is quite a. You know. Musk you know, always seems to get himself in, in some of these demonstrations. <laughs> into some. I got the picture up there right now in in um, the den, and probably oh, if our producers I got get it. a I got Tiger it. TV man. And um, <laughs> if you haven't seen the video, folks, check it out because supposedly bulletproof armored vehicle, unbreakable window. They had one of um, the employees was up there threw a rock right at the first window. Yeah, it broke it. And Musk jokingly said maybe that was a little too hard. And then he threw the rock again, much softer the second time. That's why I would encourage you to watch the video. And it broke it again. And he jokingly said, well, it didn't go through. I don't know how you launch a vehicle that has so much expectation. I'm sure they ran through tests. Maybe they didn't choose the same rock they tested with. Nonetheless, and then on top of it, just that it is a um, strikingly remarkable design for a truck yeah um let alone not delivering on what they thought so i wonder how that's gonna do and the market's telling you how they think it's gonna do with tesla down about six percent on that news yeah and what they did folks okay this is pretty cool though the they he came up with a sledgehammer before that right and whacked the car and it shows it doesn't dent you know, so that part of it was really successful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Bottom line, though, they they have work to do. And I think you, if you could post in the in the den, would you get a chance? I don't think I have your den chart as well. We'll get that um, just so I can oh, see. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Here we go. It's yeah. okay. Um, but you're right, and I think it might might have dented a little. It's it's just remarkable that you can, um, you know. At TFNN, we launch products, right? Every business, you launch products, you go through thorough testing of everything. <laughs> I imagine they had to be a little bit wary of testing something like that. You give it all these tests, and not that it happened once, that they threw the rock twice, they threw it the first time hard, they threw it the second time very softly, and it still broke the window. Um, and, you know, you got to keep in mind that Musk likes to talk with muster in terms of over promising sometimes and under delivering so uh there's going to be some questions about everything that they're saying about that truck let alone the dramatic design do, do people really want a pickup truck that looks like that it kind of reminds me of uh the delorean and back to the future yeah oh it, right? de it definitely does yeah, yeah yeah and it doesn't supposed to be out for a couple of years anyway is uh, that the deal okay, oh yeah yeah this is like yeah this is this is still on the like the drawing board that you know okay, okay. this is what was, what's coming out but because I didn't they already they already have a price tag on it though of under forty thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. you gotta have a price tag. Of on course, it. you gotta have the whole story. I mean, man. he always comes in under forty grand, right? I know, right? <laughs> but it is. Look remarkable. at that thing, man. If you have if you see this thing, folks. I mean, it's it's it really is like. I don't know what you do. Is that, I don't either. Yeah. I, I don't either. And guess what? The market it's, doesn't know either. It's, and that's it's why it's almost the stock... like a little war machine or something. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's what, you know, it said from made. It's it's like one big molded cast iron or aluminum material where it's supposed to be almost a nine millimeter bullet. It can stop. OK. Um, so it is in that regard, you know, where it's 
where it's one piece of, of material kind of molded the whole way across. But guess what, folks? You know, he had two rocks thrown at it, and they both shattered the windows. Um, not what you'd want in the market, kind of just a little bit surprised about the design, I think, on top of things as well, in terms of is that a design that's that's going to sell millions of sell. vehicles? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. No, not millions. I can't see I it. I agree. I can't I agree. see it. You know, market-wise out here, folks, uh, bottom line is you have sideways market. You know, we'll see whether uh, this baby wants to hold. You know, uh, as I said when we were coming on the air, let me just see. I, I believe it, it really cracks me up, man, when you're dealing with these larger numbers and you get a test right to the tick. And I think we still, yeah, we did. So the, the high of yesterday inside the futures, folks, was 3114.50. That was established at 8 o'clock in the morning. To the high today, 3114.50, exact so same number. So 31.14, right, yeah. to bring people along, 31.14.50, okay. And that was established at 340 in the morning. It's like, okay. really? The exact same number when you're dealing with these? It's like, okay. Well, we should be back up there, man. Didn't you hear President Trump on Fox and Friends this morning saying the trade deal is imminent? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, what 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 is going what you what we're going to see shake out here, right? So let me see a couple of his quotes out here because what you do have out here, of course, you got. So uh, Trump comes out and says very good chance to make a trade deal with China, but that unrest in Hong Kong is complicating factor. If it wasn't for him, thousands of people. This is his quote. If it wasn't for me, thousands of people would have been killed in Hong Kong right now. Trump said in a phone interview. With Fox and Friends, the only reason he's not doing it is because uh, it's going to affect the trade deal. Well, we'll see about that, folks, because the fact of the matter is uh, the Senate passed that bill, and all it actually is is, is basically giving support to the, to the folks in Hong Kong. Yes. And it was, uh, I believe it was passed 100%. Uh, and we'll see whether Trump um, vetoes it, because it's a veto... Proof deal. I, I, my take is he's going to veto it, and this is the beginning of it. Do you know what I mean? That as he's pushing it out, saying, I'm the savior, uh, but the bottom line is that, you know, we need a, a trade deal, and, you know, we'll see where this goes up because China, there's no doubt, is going to be upset with that bill. <laughs> yes. There's, there's no two ways about that. So. That's for sure. And the Senate did, you're right, pass it unanimously. I'm not sure if the House passed it unanimously, yeah. um, but the Senate did. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see. Okay, so, uh, and with support from, yeah, and so all but one Republican in the House. Okay. Um, yeah. And I, did, I had heard speculation that he is going to, but that doesn't really, oh, and good. I think that's, that's, that's just because, and to be fair on it, though, it offers very little teeth in terms of what it actually means. Oh, and zero I think teeth, I know. Yeah, right. and I think that's why, right. you know, in light of how many Republicans of his own party went with it, that he's kind of in a hard place to buck that. Um, fortunately, but we'll see how China responds because they were not happy with that for sure. No. The NQs, NQZ. So let's look at the NQs, folks. So they're the first ones that are basically uh, showing a little weakness out here today. Uh, right now, you're up a buck 25. This was a high of last night of 83.13. And uh, you're basically 40 points off it. And looks like it's going to try to. Get into the red as Tommy and I go to a break. Stay right there, folks. We're going to be coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Come right back, folks. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we have the Dow up 79, Nasdaq up 8, S&P's up 4.5, and, and we know, you know, these pot stocks have got smoked, folks. Let's go over to Canopy and take a look at Canopy because all of the pot stocks actually did come off the lows uh, a couple days ago. So if we, if we take a look from highs to lows out here, let me put it actually on a... Boy, they've had quite a move over three days, too, man. Isn't it? Yeah. You know, so we... They, the high, now this is so intriguing about a lot of these pot stocks, folks. They have a high volume high. So when you have a high volume high, you go back to it. The real question is, you know, when does it get there? It could be two, three, four years. That's, sure. you're at $59.25, you're at 1853. And what you had done is that you came all the way back into the breakout area from December of 2017. Yep. And then at that particular point, you, you took off. Uh, bottom line is that, you know, last three days, you know, canopy growth, we just went from, 1381 up to 21. Now you're back to 1856. Now here's the news on Canopy today. Now this is really intriguing too because Const uh, Constellation Brands. So Constellation Brands doesn't plan to make an additional cash contribution to Canopy growth beyond possible exercise of its existing warrants. The, el the alcohol company said in a filing today. So this is so wild that they actually had to make a filing. I'm not quite, quite sure why you'd have to make a filing on this, but... Maybe uh, it's a material effect in terms of how it might affect that stock. I'm just, I'm just thinking, I, oh, you know... Oh, yeah, it, listen, man. Well, you know, when I saw this downdraft here, it was like, hey, man, Constellation liked it, you know, at, at I believe, prices higher than this, but we'll, we'll take a look at it. It's like, okay, you know, you're going to come back in again. Yeah. So Constellation said it will evaluate. Uh, it will evaluate. Now, this is what they have. Uh, exercise of warrants uh, immediately prior to their expiration and believes Canopy is well capitalized, which it looks like yeah. it is. They have two adequately point, capitalized, yeah. right? Into, yeah. yeah, they have 2.7 billon in cash and marketable securities. Now, now that's the, Canadian, but yeah. Yeah, the warrants uh, uh, exercisable at, at 12.98 can, Canadian, and oh, that's interesting. They expire one expire May 1st. Yeah, it looks like they There's have another a second one, right? one, too. Yeah. yeah. But they still get big losses here. So let me see this. I'll go into 
Okay, so I have it up in the U.S. now. I'll go to Canada. So in Canada, folks, the symbol is weed. I think we can remember that. Yeah, pretty easy. And that's <laughs> trading at 25. So that's interesting. They, uh, 25 Canadian. And then okay. they're still at uh, 12 Canadian, man. That's still a fortune, man. That's still a double. I wish I, I, I got to Google when they actually bought the first. Yeah. You know. But man, oh man, talk about volatility. You know, if you're getting into these stocks, be prepared for some volatility. You know, oh, yeah. we both, but I think I think I'd say believe in the sector and the potential. Like we're saying, even at these levels, this company is only worth three, four, five billion, whatever it is. And whoever becomes the leader of that industry, two, three, four, five years down the line, is going to be worth way more than two, three, four, five billion dollars. Right. Um, and you just had the, I believe it was the. House Judiciary Committee, one of the committees, uh, mm -hmm. voting to um, legalize it in terms of basically descheduling it from a Schedule One drug, which would give states the right to legalize it. And that's one of the biggest impediments for cannabis across the board in the U.S., that it is a Schedule One drug which is akin to heroin. Uh, you and know, I don't, I don't get in this day and age, right, that we're supposed to be, like, smart and how that is still in place. I mean, really? I mean, I, you know, I agree, man. And it's unfortunately, like it, it, it's so whacked out. It's unbelievable. I mean, unfortunately, it, this is something that that uh, it spans both parties. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm oh, you no, know, it for spans sure, both man. parties. Like, no party it, shares it, the, the responsibility for this. Democrats and Republicans, for some reason, and whether it's, um, you know, the the older generation stuck in their ways, I would like to say some of it is because um marijuana arrests just let alone you know everything in terms of you know personal freedoms okay they account for half of drug arrests are marijuana now you know you can't have people driving around messed up or something but this is just finding pot on people arresting them and you want to talk about it goes so deep when i think about things how about the amount of the amount of money and time that is spent by police forces okay that could be used for other things like opioids how about the amount of money spent on prosecutors judges right jails taxpayer money let alone the personal freedoms of locking somebody up you know it just goes well, that, it's ridiculous un unfortunately that's one of the problems because you have jobs that are behind it of and course. There's, there's plenty of those folks that you know say hey man if we don't lock up another half of half course amount of you have people, private prisons lobbying you know, right, I, right. I, it's yeah. it's a big problem yeah. and then you have that money be going into political campaigns across the board um you know, but hopefully there's some steps in the House. It goes to the Senate and hopefully the Senate. But it, there's been some skepticism in terms of what they'll do. But that's where you saw part of the reaction this week of those stocks charging higher was on that move in the House. OK, cool. Yeah, no, yeah. I, you know, I, I, I suspect when it's going to be <coughs> legal right across the, you know, yeah, the country it's going to be when they can figure out that, yeah, we can make more money on tax than we can on basically locking people up. And, you know, to present the other side of the argument, right, people say, well, we haven't studied it. We don't know the long-term effects, right? Fair points, okay? Guess why that is the case? That is the case because federal money cannot be provided to right. study it because it is a Schedule One drug. So, you know, I don't buy that argument when it's a self-fulfilling prophecy that, um, of course, you can't study it because you've basically said marijuana is heroin. So take it off the Schedule One. It doesn't even legalize it. It basically just allows states to legalize it. And then you actually allow funding to study it. To, to make sure that we completely understand, you know, what what it does, maybe in the long term, if it affects the brain, um, everything, everything in moderation in life. OK, you know, I believe that pot should be legal. But, yeah, you shouldn't be high 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Of course, that's going to be a problem. Um, Slightly. <laughs> I know. Right. Moderation in everything in life, whether it's alcohol, whether it's excess food. Right. The, the amount of obesity we have, moderation in everything in life. But it should not be a Schedule One drug. And I would That's take true. issue with anybody who really still thinks it should. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Uber. Uh, oh. Yeah, we got uh, this guy. Uh, Galenik. He's yeah, out. He's, he's getting clean. Uh, he is, I think it said is. so Uber, you know, it's twenty nine dollars and eighty two cents. And yep. I think he's up to selling with 1.2 billion right now. Oh no, it's 1. right up 5. to 1.5. 1.5. 1.45, 1. I think his number is. He's up to uh, about half of his position. Yeah, there okay. you go. Yep. Okay. So he had sold almost a billion this week. He added 578 million dollars more, and um, 
and there you go. In terms of that's a pretty cool um, graphic Graph. there yeah. of, of where he has his money. And, you know, you can see that he's exited a substantial portion. And I would not be surprised to see him continue to exit the rest of that position. And he's probably made the decision that he got ousted from the company. He has no role in it. He has no decision making in it. And he wants to take his billions and go play with them, you know, wherever he wants. And I don't blame him. Yeah, no, I, I can see that for sure. Yeah. That, and that cloud kitchens is going to get invest, uh, in interesting to see just, you know, I'd like to see what they actually put in one of those cloud kitchens. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. We were talking about it a little yesterday, right? But just in terms of kitchens with, uh, the, you know, Uber Eats delivers, you know, just kitchens delivering food in a number of it, capacities. It's, it's all it's, delivery, right? That's, that's the only reason it's there. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. We have the Dow Industrials up 98. NASDAQ is up six, S&Ps are up four and a half, and the NDX, folks, that's the one you better watch here. That, that basically is up a one right now. Come right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we have the Dow up 64, Nasdaq's down 8, S&P's are flat, and uh, we're talking about these NQs, folks. And I'm telling you, man, when, when they like taking those NQs uh, south, man, they take them south very quickly. And we'll see. Let me just look at this for a second. So when we, we're down 15 and a half bucks right now, which is not the end of the world, uh, but let's see what's inside of these, because when they start bringing these down, these things could be highly volatile. So 
And that was after being positive pre-market, though, which is why. What's the high on that? 82.92. Yes, we're almost 40 points off the high, though. Yes. So yeah. Tesla's the culprit, one of the oh culprits. Boy. That's down 6.4%. You get Intuit off 4%. Take Two Interactive is down 3 and Ross Store is down 25 Okay. Now let's go inside the S&P because, you know, as the more pressure comes down on the NQs, it just puts pressure on the S&P. So that baby right now is up 1, not the end of the world. We'll see where it shakes out. It's going to be intriguing. Inside yeah. the Dow, uh, the strength versus the weakness, the Dow still has a few points, uh, positive points inside it. And point-wise, what do you have out here? We're up 73 bucks. You have uh, Boeing putting 15 positive, Goldman 11, Johnson & Johnson 10. Taken away from it, no big ones, really. Visa, 4, yeah. United Health 3, Procter & Gamble, 2. That's about it. Um, Friday into a holiday week. That's what I think we're looking at, Tom. Hey, how about if we could jump into Nordstrom? We still got yes. retail, right? Nordstrom, um, Foot Locker, Gap out this morning, but Nordstrom getting quite a pop. We've talked a lot. Um, our man Kevin Hinks, Think or Swim, their program coming up next, Fast Market. Um, JWN is that Thank symbol. You. And um, yeah, it's just uh, quite a pop again. And they've been a winner many times on this. Uh, I personally am a fan of Nordstrom. They got uh, JWN is in Nancy. Um, they have quite a brand for themselves. Yeah, they do. And, and you look back to even just where we were in August, down to $25. Um, you're up almost 50%. Now, they really struggled from that September. But just look at that high volume low. I know you like those high volume lows maybe getting retested. But Nordstrom Rack, man, um, I'm a big fan. They've seemed to find a spot, I think, and that's at least today they have, man, up about 6% on their earnings coming out. And look at that low from 2008, man. I mean, I they've know. had some, you know, not not to make light of the fact that they really pulled back hard over the last few years, but we'll see, you know, today a good day for Nordstrom. Yeah, so they got, let's see, <laughs> they, when we take a look at it there, Look at that. They get some good gross margins, man. So the estimated gross margin, folks, is 34%. And bottom line, they're saying it's good. year over year, it's going to be 34 to 34.3 yeah, yeah. versus 33.3. Yeah. Um, I mean, quite a beat on revenue there, right? They came in at $3.67 billion. Yeah. The number they were looking for was 3.58. I mean, not to make light, folks. That's that's what is that? That's nine ninety million dollars over ninety days. So that means they took in an extra million dollars every single day for the quarter than you thought. I mean, that's, you know, the numbers look light when you put it in decimals when you're talking about billions. But you know, a normal company, if you said we took in an extra million dollars every single day for the quarter than we thought we were going to, it's just staggering. It's a big number. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a big number. And then um, was it who? who uh, oh, uh, Foot Locker Foot was Locker, out as well, FT. and then Gap, yeah. GPS, FL, and GPS also out. Uh, yeah. FL, I think Foot Locker. Uh, thank you. So, okay, yeah. So this is down two seventy-seven. This looks like it's going to go after that low out here of uh, thirty-three. Yeah, now that's when I struggle to find as much in terms of um, you know what's going to happen with you know what so Nike isn't selling their products on Amazon. Nike, we talked about that they're going to be direct selling their products as well. Um, we were talking about even in Target, what if what if that type of deal comes out? Where does Foot Locker fit into that? Do they really have a spot to be um, a, a well-known retailer selling other people's shoes? Um, Not if don't they don't have know. Nike. <laughs> and that's just a fundamental question, you know. Yeah. I, I just, you know, I, I, you know, I always ask myself as a long-term investor, and I know we deal a lot with short-term, right? But does this company have to be around in five years? Well, yeah. geez, I don't know if Foot Locker does. Target definitely does, you know. Yeah. Um, I see Nordstrom being around as well in terms of providing that discount yet good brands, you know, kind sure. of the surplus products that that retailers have they haven't sold. But man, oh man, I mean, you know, you're paying premium prices for shoes at Foot Locker when Nike's going to be able to deliver them to your house for free. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's no doubt about it, man. Look so, at that comp sales, man. They still got smacked. Look at that. So comp sales were up 5.7%, folks, versus 2.9. That's a, that's, a, that's a nice number, man. Even the estimate was 4.8, and they crush it. Um, Maybe it has to do with exactly what you're just talking about, man. The market's looking at it and say, hey, listen, man, you know, Nike's changing, you know, what they're doing because they Foot Locker definitely depends on a Nike. I mean, if you walk in 
a, a Foot Locker yes. store, folks. You might as well walk in a Nike store. <laughs> I agree, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's pretty dramatic. Geez, but, it's tough for me to see why that stock got smacked today with all those numbers, man. I know. But, yeah. Yeah. It certainly doesn't show it here of no. why uh, the stock's down almost uh, 8%. Yeah. Let's see. I like to pull it up on the Thinkorswim platform only yeah. because it really shows you. And so this is great, man. You know, I didn't even know this was going to happen, but I don't know what they talked about on that conference call, oh. man. But look at that bar. So, folks, you know, check out the Thinkorswim platform. Download the demo account because you can see when the earnings come out. Yeah. A nice little graphic. There's your earnings. Guess what? Mm. All is well, man. You tick up just <laughs> like we said. The earnings look great. You're up to $44 initially. You hung up there. The earnings call starts at $42, and immediately it sells off and reaches a low on that bar of $37.77. So <laughs> I imagine there were some questions asked that whoever was on that call, whether it was the CEO, provided some – some guidance that was not included in the raw numbers that was a little bit dicey that the market did not like to hear, especially the analyst and so forth. No, no doubt. No doubt. And as we're sitting here talking, you know, you're getting a little bit more pressure uh, inside of the uh, NQs. You're down 27. Uh, notes, uh, bottom line flat right now. You get the 30 year up by uh, six ticks. Um, oh, Bitcoin. Poor Bitcoin's not getting any love, Tom. <laughs> yeah, let me bring this up. XBT. This, what this did, folks, is that it broke the bottom of its consolidation. So this can, yeah, be, I, this can be some trouble here for Bitcoin. It was interesting. Larry got a call on Bitcoin this morning, um, where to buy it. Um, yeah. Look just interesting, getting some calls again, as in, you know, some volatility, pulling back, just like you said, under those lows. I mean, you know... A lot of us are technical traders, man. I don't see a low until you get down to exactly where you're at there. Exactly yeah. 4,000. What is that? 4,052 maybe, the high of that 5,300 at least. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so what you did out here, folks, in the picture, this is, you know, you, you get a consolidation taking place. Uh, the lower end of the consolidation was uh, 7,300. The top was 9,900. Oh, my God. And, you, you know, this is wide price spread. You're blowing by this thing. So it's like, okay, man, this thing... 5,300 to 4,000 is on it now. So it's like, whoa. Yeah. And this is where, you know, when you, if we looked at that Bitcoin on a, on a larger chart, XBI would just put it back up. This is, you know, you can make the argument that, hey, this has been on a downturn forever. You, you've had bounces because, you know, but, you know the high is the high. Oh. You know? Another, you know, when you think about long term, is Bitcoin going to be around in five years? Yeah. You know, it could be, but I'm not sure. Cryptos will be, that's for sure. But does no. Bitcoin necessarily have to be around? I don't 19, know. 19,500. The day they started futures trading on the CME. Yeah, two years ago. Oh. Next month. Amazing. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. 
Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. 877-927-6648. Uh, so we got uh, Ray Dahlia, Tom. Uh, bottom line, very successful uh, fund manager. <laughs> uh, it looks like he's putting on over a million. Is this? Oh, no, a billion. Yeah. A million is peanuts, man. Yeah, Come on. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> over a billion in option uh, trades that, uh, let me get the story, that, I think you had it if you go back to his his, his his yeah you had it there on Did his I? on his uh, on his profile it was right under there okay. um, but I'll I'll find it's 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 everywhere in the news I'll pull it up on CNBC there so he's is. got I a got billion it. dollar short right front page of CNBC.com there we go um, I got it world you got it up as yep. well the world's largest head fund reportedly bets over one billion on a big stock market sell off soon so the key there is s p 500 and it's interesting that or the euro stocks 50. now what's important to keep in mind here is i believe they have 150 billion dollars under management yes total assets that represents one percent of the fund that could easily be a hedge against what he has now it's sure. quite it's quite a number but yeah. it's not like it's a four billion dollar fund, and they have a billion dollar short. That's which, right. You, you know, it's a it's if if the headline said that Bridgewater Associates puts one percent of their assets under management into a short hedge, yeah, it would take on a completely different meaning. Yet exactly. it would have the same exact. Um, right. You know, it would it would be a factual representation. Um, but nonetheless, man, he is a brilliant guy. I have a ton of respect for him. I'm reading his book right now. He's got some great interviews out there on 60 Minutes if you uh, want to go find them yourselves. And he's got some, you know, oh, yeah. uh, even to hedge it with that type of money, man, it is quite a number. And so he, he used put options assembled over months by Goldman and Morgan Stanley, give investors the option of selling stocks at a predetermined price. Um, and that's not long, much. You're talking about much. <laughs> that's the that's yes. inspiration on these. Uh, so, yeah. you know. You know, uh, there's a lot. There's a lot going on, man. In terms of you have the biggest bull market we've ever had. We're going on about 10 straight years from 2009 to 2019. Yep. Even in the last year, we're up, you know, 20 percent right now in the markets. You're coming into an election that's going to have two completely different opposing factors no matter who comes out of the democratic bunch okay between president trump and the democratic contender the market is going to be somewhat uncertain about what's going to happen and you have the trade deal looming over all of this yeah. and no matter what the president says folks wake up to the fact that every time we get a actual factual news story it's a negative twist on the chinese not being okay or the u.s not being okay no matter how many times president trump goes on Fox News or stands on the, the front lawn of the White House and says trade deals coming in two weeks, okay? He said that about seven to eight weeks ago now when he said we just got to get the details in writing and 
all the news has been that that is completely false. So I imagine that's what Ray Dalio is looking at. And it's not going to be a sell off ahead of the election the week before. Right. OK, this this, you know, primaries are starting to begin that you're going to get actual voting. The Democratic field's going to get whittled down. You're going to have one of the contenders coming out of the top, and then you're going to have a presidential election that's going to get rough, I imagine, and it's going to be two completely opposing views, and the market is not going to be okay with not being sure of where that's going to be. And um, add the trade deal on top of that, and I, I just I see the potential, not that it's going to dive. I see a, a potential for, for a decent pullback, man, let alone, like we talked about with Kevin Hinks yesterday, with the markets up 20%, are you really going to wait in the market when last year, folks, in December alone, we covered it. If you weren't watching yesterday's show, the dot, the S and P, right, Tom, yeah. went from 2,800 to 2,300 in December, in December alone. December alone, right? Okay, so all of that's on the table to keep in mind here. Oh yeah, it's <laughs> it's a big one too, man. I mean, when you when you look at this, I just I just brought this up. It's pretty intense, actually. Yeah, yeah. and there you go. It was December 3rd, I think, was the, the high of the weekly. Yeah, 2,800 yep. to 2,443. Nope, you're in the wrong bar. Oh. I remember. It's 2,346, I... yeah. Okay. Look at that. That's, that's, yeah. that's intense. There's I mean, no you're doubt. talking about 500 points. You're talking about almost 20% in the month of December. Right. <clears throat> there were a lot of bonuses that got demolished during that month. Oh, yeah. And... Uh, with with everything I just said, Ray Dalio taking that short, people are aware of the potential at least. I don't know if it's gonna happen. I don't know if it's gonna happen December, but the potential for some of that some of those gains to erode. I mean, as we see um, you know, the S P at thirty one oh four, we're a solid one percent off the high that we had already. I think we're up to thirty one thirty two um as the overnight or intraday high in the s p at one point so you're talking about a solid 30 s p points and nobody even would would realize that we're we're one percent off the high yeah. um and when you start talking about if we ever get a 10 percent correct tuesday yeah this week exactly yeah, yeah. so wild let's go look yeah. at that gold contract they want to whack gold again it's friday okay no no reason not to <laughs> so uh we just went, we had a high out here of uh, 1473, 10 bucks down. Now, what's intriguing here, though, is that you had an immediate rejection, <laughs> like fast and furious, of this uh, 40, 1461. So, this is going to be cool watching how this shakes out because we're right back inside. Uh, and, well, 1463 is the number. We're right at it, actually, 14,63, 70. That, all those, that number, the second number I just gave you, 14,63, 70. Just the lows of yesterday, folks. But on Fridays, you always got to be cognizant uh, uh, of the metals market that they can basically take that thing south um, pretty quickly. Yeah. So it's just it's wild, man. It's wild watching it. So what ends up happening, folks, is that at 1.30 Friday afternoon, Eastern Standard Time, bottom line, your, it, it, the electronic exchange is still open, but the exchange to, to really get big blocks of gold through where the banks go, that's it. That's it until... Sunday night at 8.30 when Australia and the Asia okay. opens up. You know, so that's what makes us always, you know, if, if gold is running topside, your probability goes much higher that, guess what, it can really run topside and then people are nervous they don't want to be shot gold. When yeah. gold's flat like this, guess what, they like to jam it and say, okay, you know what, they're not going to be able to trade it over the weekend. I don't think, uh, well, I, even though I'm a bull in, in gold, I can see that the bear case that, hey, listen, man, the market's shaking everything off. It doesn't matter what sure. happens over the weekend, right? You know sure. what I mean? It's like, uh, so. Hey, so I'm going to jump around a little bit completely, all right? Okay. I wanted to cover a story that had to do with um, the ring um, that is the, the uh, camera that people put on their front door, yes. man. I saw this article a couple days ago, and it's just staggering, talking about a police state. So Amazon says police can keep videos from ring doorbells forever and share them with anyone. So we're living in a police state. We're the ones filming everything, and we don't even know it, man. So to get down into the, the meat of this, right? Yeah. Now, there's a lot of good that has come from, of course, videos and people being able to be caught for crimes that they're doing. But it's staggering when you have police. So Amazon's Ring Network, more than 600 police departments in the U.S. can now request video footage from those cameras. They're okay. on everyone's front door. Yeah. Okay. This is perfect. We'll tease it to come back, man, because they can request it anywhere within half a mile of a crime 
within 45 days of the crime, 12 hours of video, and they get to keep that video and do whatever they want with it forever, no matter what, if, if a crime even committed. Wow. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We are talking ring, so let's talk about this. It's just interesting, man. It's a little jump away from the market, but Amazon's a public company, man. There should be some backlash, and I have an Alexa, okay? So I'm cool with some of this stuff, but it makes me rethink things. So to get into the heart of it, this had to do with, I believe it was Marquis, a senator, asking Amazon for, for commentary on what they do and the privacies of it. And the real meat of this is that, and I've highlighted it, Amazon lets police request up to 12 hours of footage, any house that falls within half a mile of a suspected crime scene from the past 45 days, okay? Yeah. And connected doorbells are on their way to becoming a mainstay in household America, and they can keep these forever and do whatever they want with them, regardless of whether they show a crime or not. That's wild. If you think about it, there's a crime committed probably every... Um, 45 days within a half mile of probably 99.9% .9 of the country, which means in theory, they could have footage of almost every single street of every minute of every day if they wanted right now. And we're the ones providing it. Um, uh, we well, hey, listen, man, that's Facebook. 
Will, we need know. some, you know, yeah. and, and all they need to do for this is almost provide a case file number. It's not like you need to request a, a, a judge order or anything like that. Um, and that's the scariest part when you start thinking that they can say a crime has been committed. They just put out the request for all the videos within a half mile. Yeah. And for 45 days. Wow. It's it was staggering, man. So I just want to wake people up because it kind of blew my mind. And again, I'm a fan of Amazon. I have an Alexa, so I'm not, you know, a, a conspiracy theorist uh, police state. But boy, that one kind of surprised me. And there should be some type of it's about power and concerns. control, man. The more power oh, they get, the more power they want. OK. Stay right there, folks. Uh, we got Think of Swim coming up next. And I'm at Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave Wright. I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Have a great Thanks, one. Man. Have a safe you one. You too. Love you. Dow. Dow uh, up 42. NASDAQ uh, down 14. S&P's flat. Stay right there, folks. Think of Swim coming right up.